Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. We test, do we test the mic? Test, 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 test. Mic check. You can hear us all. I can hear you guys. Alan, can you hear us? I got gotcha. you. Excellent. Hey, Alan. Yeah. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's really what we're here for. Snake goes with everything. Two of you. Yeah, all three, three of you. Of you. Yeah, <laughs> that works well. We Our move. Yeah. All right, so are we good to go? Tests are good. Rolling, all that kind of fun stuff. We're good. Okay, I'm gonna take off my glasses for a minute, but I will put them back on because I can't read without them. Um, so welcome everybody. I'm John Fitzgerald from iGems.tv and thrilled to be here to talk about streaming in the new world. Uh, we've got a terrific panel here to talk about the, the, the new landscape as it can, continues to evolve. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a panelist to my left and uh, he's gonna tell us a little bit about his company uh, of which we are all either part of or soon to be part of this amazing company. And, uh, and then a little bit of about how he got there. And then we'll work on down the line and then we'll start in with some questions and we will take a bit of a Q&A at the end. So stand by for that. Thank you again for coming. So the head of uh, Liquid Media Group, Josh Jackson. Thank you so much. Uh, so I am Josh Jackson. I'm the, the chairman and one of the co-founders of Liquid Media Group, a company that I started because in my travels of 30 years of being inside of this business, I saw that there was a massive gap between the amount of talent in the community and how that talent was able to uh, retain and maintain the ownership of the things that it was producing. So I grew up in Vancouver. I was always struck from a very young age about uh, how good the work we were doing for other people was. <laughs> And as I had gone through my, my life in this industry, predominantly as an actor, I saw the, the coming streaming revolution as the beginning of the breaking down of the, the gatekeepers, of the barriers to entry for storytellers getting into the marketplace. And I thought that I could finally realize a dream that I'd had for my entire life, which was to empower people who spend their life and times and money and energy and love and passion building these stories, telling these stories, and allowed them to retain more of the ownership of their own work so that they can survive and tell another story. So that's a couple of years ago now. Turns out building a company is hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it takes a while to find the right partners. So I'm very excited to be a part of this panel here today because the family has recently expanded. And for the first time, I really can see uh, that vision, that dream that I was having, taking shape and our ability to now move out into the community that I've lived my entire life in, the creative community that I've lived my entire life in, and be a part of solving for uh, a massive gap inside of the industry between the sort of traditional, we'll call it studio system, or the haves, and the rest of us who are, who are telling stories and doing beautiful and brilliant work and often either having to sell our material at, at uh, cut rate prices at the very last second because we, we need to find either gap financing or distribution or whatever the pain point is. Um, and we can help be part of the solution for empowering those storytellers to get their stories in front of the world. Amazing. So we can all go now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next up, Keegan McCall with Projector. That's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys, thanks for coming. A um, little backstory for me. Uh, I was part of the original founding team of Real House. We launched in, back in 2012. Uh, this is a very different time when early years uh, creatives were like finally starting to put on their entrepreneurial hats and uh, monetizing their work. Uh, and we were seeing websites all over the Internet hacking together PayPal checkouts and digital file delivery systems all on like a WordPress website. And it was taking filmmakers like years to even build these websites. So uh, 
we launched Realhouse, which was a turnkey solution for any creative to monetize their work, uh, which was really exciting for us. Uh, flash forward 10 years, we're now part of the Liquid Media family and uh, very honored and stoked to be here um, and still doing that work. Uh, you know, creatives now more than ever are wanting more control over their IP and wanting to monetize and distribute in a way that's meaningful for them. So that's really what Projector is all about, uh, handing over the tools and uh, business solutions for, for filmmakers to creatively distribute and monetize their work. Um, so very stoked to, to be here with you guys and to chat about streaming today. Terrific. Sheila Andreen from IndieFlix. Thank you. Um, she left from IndieFlix. I, uh, well, I was a costume designer on TV shows and started to make short films and then independent films and went around the film festival circuit and uh, saw that there was an, just a ton of amazing content out there. It was not being picked up by Hollywood. And so I naively hung a shingle thinking it's going to create a marketplace to really help filmmakers, you know, get their content out there. And what I realized is that content makers, filmmakers are people and they need um, support and they need guidance and they need a village to help get their content out there. So IndieFlix became your source for independent film, connecting people through movies. And I spent a decade basically learning about the human condition um, and how we need each other to get to make to make a difference in the world, and so IndieFlix over the years, you know, we've gone from having twelve thousand titles with worldwide white rights streaming globally. I went through the whole, you know, download, download to own, progressive download. Thank God, streaming came in when the world economy went into the toilet, and have sort of pivoted and survived, learning along the way, watching the festivals change, the studios change, everything going to streaming, Blu-ray was not the dominant medium. And, um, and now here we are pivoting to be content for a purpose, content to build community, connecting people through movies, still continuing to support and educate filmmakers and help them to learn how to monetize and create multiple products out of their one product so they can go on to make even more products, stories. Amazing, changing the world. And, you know, you dream big. You get to include a lot of people. So thanks, Josh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul June from Filmocracy. Hey, everyone. Um, so I used to work in independent film sales. I was going to all the big markets and buying and selling movies with big actors. And I didn't really know about the true independent side, like the sub $1 million budget side. And as I started to learn more and more about it, and I was seeing these really amazing films and I would take them to my boss and I'd be like, look, I've seen this film. It, it's really good. You've never heard of it. Nobody's in it, but it's good, I promise. And he'll just say, no, no, like bring me Josh Jackson or something. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. You know, it's really tough to break into the market. And that's why we started Filmocracy, because most of the time these films cannot get anywhere because you don't have cast, you don't have a big budget or IP. So what do you do? How do you as the consumer decide that you're going to watch an independent film? It's scary. I don't want to waste 90 minutes of my life if I don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, so we started as a streaming platform built around rewarding people for watching and rating movies, discovering new content, incentivizing them with virtual popcorn that they can use to get things like gift cards or movie tickets or festival passes, just a little kick in the butt to try something new. Uh, but then the pandemic struck and you know, we saw this opening in the market for virtual film festivals and film festivals serve such a valuable purpose in discovering content. And we have the big festivals, we're at one right now, but each one will program maybe up to 200 films. So what about the rest? They go to the lower tier festivals and they hope that they can build some sort of festival plan to reach higher places. And that's what we're doing now with hosting a lot of virtual film festivals and giving them a platform that makes them feel you know, elevated and with a worldwide audience, they can have people from any country around the world tune in and participate. And this has really been a boon for them during these trying times and also given them an advantage that they didn't have before. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so last but not least, far away in the corner, Alan Christensen from Digital Cinema United. Hi, Alan. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Alan. Um, 
I come from a studio slash big lab background. I used to be at Fox and, um, and also Deluxe. So um, I've been in the content finishing delivery world for forever um, in a good way. And uh, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of challenges that independent filmmakers um, and distributors have in that, in that space. Um, my, I guess, MO has always been to find better ways to support um, clients of all sizes um, and, and build automation and tools for them to get their content seen. Um, so we're the, uh, unlike Josh over there, we're like the non-glamorous people in the, in the equation, but we, we serve a big purpose. Um, it's really important um, that the standards and technologies that, that are used are, are upheld um, to present mediums the way uh, content owners and, and distributors would like to see them. So, uh, so we provide a valuable service in that space and we are integrated with a lot of different clients, um, including studios, IMAX, independents, um, filmmakers, sales agents. We plug into every vertical across the supply chain. So it's a really cool space for us to be in and, and we're really excited about where Liquid is taking this and plugging that into all the other channels that's now available um, through the other companies. Terrific. Thank you, Alan. Welcome. Yes. Um, so again, I'm John Fitzgerald from iGEMS. And just to tell you a little bit about iGEMS, iGEMS TV was created as a search engine uh, and a recommendation engine to really help audiences find out what's worth watching and where to watch it. So we connect through three different categories. We have human curation, uh, where we help audiences find the best stuff with human eyes and human programming. We also have uh, a sharing tool through our fans with word of mouth. And then lastly, we'll have machine learning as the preferences piece to help track your data and your information and feed audiences the best content based on what they're watching. So those are the three things we're doing on the iGEMS TV side. We also do a weekly newsletter. It goes out to thousands of people telling them what's new and what they should watch with trailers and links to where they can see these projects. Uh, on the iGEMS Pro side, we've created uh, tools for filmmakers to provide solutions for them. We're, we're aggregating the best articles about the independent film space, focusing primarily on exhibition and streaming, talk about what's going on in the festival circuit, what's being bought and sold, taking articles from Variety and Deadline and IndieWire and, and putting them all in one place. We also have a podcast, we do courses, film festival mastery, helping filmmakers navigate the festival circuit. And we've created a directory where filmmakers will be able to put their movies uh, to be discovered and bought and sold. So there is a kind of a consumer side and, a, and an industry and filmmaker solution side. Um, my background briefly, I, I started out uh, years ago, not to date myself, but um, <laughs> When our film didn't get into Sundance, me and two other guys started Slam Dance. So I kind of fell into the festival world. Uh, from there, uh, was brought in to t take over AFI Fest. So I ran that for a few years. And then Santa Barbara, Naples, did a bunch of film festivals. So I learned a lot about programming and, and event production and, and discovery and support of emerging talent. Uh, I, after that, I transitioned at some point back into filmmaking, made a half a dozen social impact documentaries and then moved into uh, an acquisition space where I've done acquisitions for a few different companies, supporting Paul and uh, doing a lot of consulting for independent filmmakers, helping them map out their festival strategies, their distribution strategies and helping festivals create a foundation that they can, they can build upon. So uh, to bring that full circle, I do a lot of work with Paul at Filmocracy, helping them bring in festivals. And uh, I'm gonna actually start with Paul today. Uh, my first question, uh, not just because I know him best, but because um, I think since we're talking about the streaming universe and how COVID has essentially turned everything upside down, I think it was really smart, in fact, for a streaming platform like Filmocracy to pivot and say, okay, we've got this platform, we've got this technology, how can we support filmmakers and how can we support film festivals by offering this up? So Paul, maybe talk a little bit about where that came from and, and how that works in terms of supporting filmmakers and supporting festivals. Yes, yeah, so I would say there's two sides to it. The first that we started with was just standard streaming. How do you get more people to watch films that they wouldn't normally watch? And so that's where our rating system comes into play. And we're asking people after they watch a film, you know, how was the plot? 
the dialogue, cinematography. And then based on this, we'll create some sort of a, a composite score that we show to the audience. So they can say, look, I don't know what this movie is. This person is on it. I don't know who they are, but it's a 9.2. So maybe I'll, I'll give it a chance. And we've seen that proven out uh, over the course of our streaming. We've seen all the higher rated stuff watched more, which makes a lot of sense. And because of that, we have some distributors now also using the platform to find content to acquire because we're making their job easier now. Now they don't have to go to a festival and just watch the things that they hear or, or think might be more successful, but now they have the data that they can actually use and see like, look, this film, the audiences love it. It's great across all these different categories. Maybe it'll work in my territory. So we've been facilitating a lot of those deals. Uh, and then the second side is the streaming for the film festivals. And there's a lot of platforms out there that are hosting virtual film festivals, but mostly they're just like standard VOD, Netflix style, click on a poster and watch a movie type of thing. And that's okay. But for us, we feel like festivals are this, you know, we are together, we are talking to each other, we're meeting, we're coming up with new ideas, we're networking and planning our next projects. That is such a huge component of film festivals. It's not just the films. So adding this ability, kind of like we're doing now, uh, for people from all over to tune in together, collaborate, you know, learn from each other. Uh, we hosted AFM last year, and that was one of the biggest pieces of success they had. It was just they did not expect this thirst for networking and connection across such a worldwide audience. You know, they usually are based in Santa Monica, and they get you know a decent number of people, but this time it was just from all over you would never expect. So that's the beauty of technology, and I think uh, we're very excited to continue this path of supporting film festivals and helping filmmakers through that venue. Terrific. Let's let's jump over to Keegan for a moment, and maybe you could share a bit more about Projector and how you've worked with film festivals and, again, do a lot to support uh, filmmakers, but you're also working with festivals, so maybe connect that for us. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I think all of us, we've experienced increased demand over the pandemic for more content or experiences. Uh, festivals is one of our features where um, you can live screen uh, different premieres with a live Q&A like this, um, where people can chat alongside, uh, communicate directly with the cast and crew. And this is an incredible engaging experience for a lot of viewers at home. Uh, which typically wouldn't have the opportunity to do that in the past. So we're facilitating these really meaningful, engaging experiences online uh, that is really elegant. Like the, the product that we've built is highly visual, dynamic. Uh, we spent a lot of time making it look really beautiful. So um, when people come to Projector, they're enticed by that elegance in that stage uh, that you're just not getting from a Vimeo or a YouTube um, so not only does it look great for the viewer, uh, but the filmmaker has access to many more tools, distribution, monetization, um, and an entire fully fledged out a festival product. So um, really stoked to, to have that in our arsenal now. It's a, it's a highly scalable product that you know anyone in this room could set up tomorrow a film festival for themselves if you wanted to <laughs> uh, and and monetize it so so yeah um, that's been our experience over the last year uh, increased demand for that um, and I think in the future we'll see that right we'll see hybrid festivals more and more often um, it won't only be you know, the Whistler Film Festival kind of in this corner in this remote part of Canada, uh, people will be able to beam in there and, and actually interact, which we're pretty excited for. And we potentially build um, a marketplace. You know, one of the pain points for uh, independence is particularly if you're not going to a TIFF or a Sundance um, is very often you either have to enter into 5,000 different festivals and hope somewhere along the path you, you garner enough eyeballs to, to get a distribution deal. Or what happens way too often is you just disappear, right? You just, you, you get to the end of your festival circuit and, and this thing that you have poured yourself into just falls down the rabbit hole. Because while the advent of streaming has been amazing in the theoretical democratization, right? The barriers to entry into the marketplace are significantly lower than when I started, right? There really wasn't a, a parallel system other than the broad studio and then eventually sort of the independent studio. 
now you can be a real independent producer at a, at a variety of different levels. But you also then have to become a studio yourself. You have to learn to get the eyeballs. Exactly. You have to learn all of these tools and reinvent the wheel over and over again. So I think what's so exciting to me is what you're seeing is that what we're solving for is that problem. Right? You don't have to completely relearn the entire industry every two years as it shifts over because we provide the solutions. We wanted to make Projector beautiful because we want to honor your product in the same way that you honor your product. We want to be there from the production, from, you know, from the inception of the, of the idea, through the production, through the financing, through the distribution, because each one of those pain points is a different skill set that you need to know, and it's very hard to do on the independent level. And we also want to provide a marketplace so that in the advent that you don't find a distribution deal or you don't find a distribution deal that you like, you can take ownership or not take back. You can maintain the ownership of your material and you become the arbiter of your own success, right? We can give you all of the tools, all of the analytics, a beautiful platform, a place to sell it, and we can help you get yourself in front of your audience, right? And, and that to me is a revolutionary idea that's just finally found the, the technical wherewithal to, to be possible. And these are the wonderful people who are going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the truth, too, is a lot of independent filmmakers end up playing the festival circuit, and then they give their movie to any number of companies, Gravitas, Magnolia, whoever else, and gets them on Amazon and some other streaming platforms. But if, the, if they don't have the tools and market these projects, they just sit on a shelf, and they never actually generate any revenue for it. And they chances are handed over the rights to their movie for 10 to 15 years. Right. I want to shift gears for a moment because Sheila is doing some other things that are truly remarkable that can actually have impact on the world. And in terms of streaming and markets, can you just talk a little bit about how you've, you've managed to really support the, the effort to take these movies and make a difference with them, take them into the educational markets with toolkits and screening in schools and communities? I mean, you've screened for for corporations, schools. I mean, it's a huge market that, frankly, 10 or 15 years ago, nobody's really thinking about. Yeah, I don't think anybody would. I didn't even think about it. It, <laughs> it, it was really an organic process. You know, we... It was challenging to get some of these films that were good, had an entertaining factor, but also educational component. And how do you get someone to go to a theater to watch that? How do you even get it into a film festival? So, like, how do we reach the audience? You just put it up online. No one's going to watch it. If they do, there's no conversation around it. So how do you evolve from, you know, the point of making the film is to do good in the world? So we just started experimenting with, you know, playing it at one of my kids' schools. And the sixth and seventh grade, you know, 180 kids, within 90 minutes, it transformed that community. Mm -hmm. And before we could figure out how to take it to more schools, schools were calling us. And that sort of put us, set us off on one track and then we started doing evening screenings with the parents as well as classroom screening. And then the parents were saying, this should be seen at my work. So suddenly we're at World Bank and Starbucks and Microsoft and Liberty Mutual. And suddenly we're having to evolve quickly to be like past their legal standards, their tech standards, their <laughs> privacy, because you're going into an insurance company. And then those insurance companies are now connecting us with more corporations that they supply to. And they're saying, not only do we have health insurance for you, but we also have this very therapeutic effect uh, content, which can act as the tip of the spear to then engage your employee base of 100,000 or more or less to connect with their EAP to now start taking advantage of preventative benefits. So we were like, holy cow, I wouldn't have put that on the roadmap, but <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it. And so then they're like, what else do you have to keep the engagement going? And it's like, I'm sure there's companies that do that, but I couldn't find any that really paired well with the, top, you know, our sort of social impact tentpole films, as I call them, <laughs> doing our version of a theatrical, which is in schools, corporations, houses of worship. And, you know, it's really interesting. Like you can put up a screen anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pointing to you, Alex. And, um, and really start to like have impact and build community and have film travel around the world. You know, the whole idea of first box office weekend, like where did that come from, <laughs> right? Like, why is it that we have to eat the whole buffet in like one setting? Why can't we enjoy and savor the content that we're creating, the stories that we're, we're telling and, and really 
keep the story going long after you've watched yeah, it's the about movie. engagement right a lot of yeah. times it's engage inspire and then in some, in some cases take action yeah, yeah. giving them have the impact. tools to take action yeah to have an impact and then measure that impact so you can create more content to keep that conversation going so you're creating your own sequels right yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant Bravo. I wish I'd yeah. thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was my idea. Um, so I want to turn back to Paul for a moment and talk a little bit about this, this kind of shift. And I, I don't want this to become a studio conversation, but I'm just curious to hear the take on the fact that obviously there's been a lot of changes at the studio level. And with COVID, theaters took a hit. And you, you see companies like, like HBO – and Warner Brothers going day and day to streaming platforms. Um, tell us a bit about your take on on where we're headed with this whole streaming, like like first run and second run movies. And obviously, we know you know independent films, but do you, do you see that the 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 gap shrinking in some ways, and 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 seeing more bigger projects coming to filmography that can, people can see. And, and promote through the popcorn and the gamification, all that to spike eyeballs? Yeah, I think what we're learning as we see all these crazy deals happening is that nobody knows what they're doing. So, <laughs> I mean, when you see HBO going with Discovery, like these two things should not belong together. And yet here we are. And, you know, corporations are trying to improve their bottom lines, cutting what they have to. And, you know, it's really about IP, IP, IP. What do we own? What can we create that we keep forever? And nobody is really servicing those other creators who are not producing for them anymore. And we have so many people who are making amazing content that do not want to be a part of the studio system and do not want to. I mean, if they got in, maybe they would want to. But for the most part, we're <laughs> standing learn, here. They learn how broken it is and they <laughs> yeah. jump ship as quick as they could. Right. So can you create a viable alternative, something that is competitive with getting a studio offer? And I think a lot of independent companies have been trying this on their own to varying degrees of success. But I don't think anyone has quite tried what Liquid is doing now, which is bringing a lot of these companies together to become greater than the sum of our parts so that we can be competitive with those studios. And we are like our own studio, except we are fighting for you instead of just fighting to own you. Right. I, I mean, this yeah. this is a large part of what the company was founded around. It's why we're a public company, right? Recognizing that I, I personally don't think that in the streaming world that discrete solutions can, can work at scale anymore, right? Everybody on this panel represents a different place inside of the industry, but the reality is, is that it takes the whole thing to actually provide a solution for the people who are, who are creating the content. And, yeah. and for, for an individual company to recreate that on their own, when they are also trying to say make a movie or produce a TV show or whatever it is, it's an it's an unbelievably difficult ask, and I have the gray hairs to prove it. <laughs> so, you know, this is precisely why we are all here together now, is because we recognize that that stronger together thing to get to a to a volume and to a scale where we can really we we can really be of benefit to the community that we want to serve, to the Sheilas of the world, right? That that we can actually build a a platform that gives you the best ability to take your, your hard work, right? all of the things that you've put into it, and get it in front of as many people in the smartest way possible. To take advantages of, the, of the, the efficiencies that streaming was supposed to make broadly available, but really have not yet. That's what we want to be doing. Right, and in some ways, it, it, without really saying it, I mean, it, it becomes a filmmaker-driven studio instead of the reverse, right. instead of it being talent driven and well, upside down. I'm not actually all that smart. So <laughs> the idea that I came up with was not a new idea. It was the old idea, right? It, whether the, as a lover and a historian of this- The auteur system? Well, the, the, uh, yeah, the, when the auteurs were also the studios, right? When, when they were putting together UA and Warner Brothers and Disney in its beginning, you know, those were artist driven, creative driven places. And over time, they have transitioned into a new place. And there has always been a parallel track inside the industry, you know, in the post post blockbuster 70s industry, mm -hmm. there's always been a easier parallel track. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, 
and the, and it really kicked off. You know, when I was coming of age in the film industry in the, in the '90s, was when it, it, there were really was two separate industries, mm -hmm. right? There was the studio system, there was the independent system, and the gap has just gotten wider and wider and wider between the two. Is the studios have decided they make really only tent poles now, mm -hmm. and gotten out of the 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 portion of the business that is the movies that we probably all grew up enjoying, and the independent system has has proliferated but become noisy and there's a massive gap of service between the studios and all the rest of us and we thought streaming we thought that you know the streaming world was going to to bring that gap closer but it hasn't happened yet because we haven't existed yet but now we're here and we're going to fix it right. and we're going <laughs> to and we're going to help people find it yeah and we're going to help people find it that's absolutely that's important thing right because you can have all this great content but if there's 2500 streaming platforms right and you don't have a guide to tell them where to go just saying. It's just okay. Noise. So how about <laughs> open it up for some uh, questions from the audience? Not everybody at once. Not everybody at once. There's too many hands. And again, if anyone's tuning in virtually, just click on the box underneath Alan. You guys have it all figured out already. <laughs> you just explained it so. Well. <laughs> I think there's a, I think there's a component to this that's also. Um, it has been brought up, you know, the breaking down the barrier um, in the system also allows more distributors to enter the landscape. So it also brings new distributors to the table, people that haven't had the means or know-how or relationships to to release content within their territories and, and create new streaming platforms, etc. So, you know, platforms like this, the technology component here has broken down that barrier as well. And I think that's hugely exciting. Um, especially, you know, on, on a global scale. Um, and then she, what Sheila's doing in, in, in the entertainment space, I mean, with the day and day theatrical digital model that's now becoming what it is, there are more screens available in theaters because the studios are putting less money into tent poles because they cannot yield the same returns on a theatrical release as they were in the past. So there's more theater screens available for alternative educational, different types of content. And that is in a very, very exciting space to, to watch out for as well. It's a great point. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, I mean, it, it, oh, sorry, yes. Um, I was just gonna ask, what kind of content do you guys Well, it depends on which point of the process uh, a filmmaker would come to us or a storyteller would, would come to us. So the, if, you, if we're right there with you at the very beginning, we're going to build this project right from the very beginning. And we're going to work you through the creative. We're going to work you through a financing plan. Uh, we'll work you eventually through the, the distribution uh, plan. And with the metrics that, that we will be able to glean along the way, depending on, on where you're geographically located or where your audience might um, be, we will help you be more targeted in the, in the places and manner in which you distribute that film so that you have ultimately more control, more responsibility, but more control over, uh, say, a marketing spend in a specific market that, that maybe is your home country or home market. On the, on the festival side, you know, the digital hybrid festival, which probably would have taken another 10 or 15 years to happen because the festival world is so cannibalized and everybody is fighting over their own fiefdom, but COVID has really changed that. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a tremendously exciting possibility inside because the film festivals are such an important part of the ecosystem of storytelling around the world. And it is a place where virtually or in person, different people get to come together they get to not only tell their stories, show their stories, but they also get to meet other people who are telling and showing their stories. And there is a, a tribe. Yeah, there's a tribe. Exactly. There's a, they, the, but the, the industry is a tribe, right? I mean, it is a small group of very dedicated, often crazy people who have decided to go down this wild path in life. And for us to be able to not only provide uh, a, a digital solution for your festival, right? Two of these seats here but also potentially give you analytics on the distribution um, 
uh, a distribution plan afterwards, the digital seed here, and then also find you uh, into a place where you are curated into a list where the people who might actually want to watch you could find you, right? That's incredibly important, finding your eyeballs and finding your audience. And on Projector, we can give you a place that matches, matches your content at the level at which you think it should be matched. It's not a YouTube, it's not a Vimeo, it's not a clearinghouse, it's not a warehouse. It is a beautiful product that allows you to be displayed in a place and in a manner in which you, you should, right? We are honoring your material and we're giving, giving you the information and the data that you need at the distribution side to know who your audience is, where your audience is, what price point they're actually watching at, how, how much time they're spending with your material, and you get to be in charge of your success and failure, right? There's, there's a kind of a, has always existed a black box at the end of the process where we hand over our material to somebody who hopefully is a decent person or persons, and then hope that they're going to take that out into the world in the most intelligent way, and that they're going to have that same passion for your story that you have. And what we're saying is we, that one of the places that we can break down is we can, we can keep you in that last portion of the process where your passion will continue to drive the interest. And to Sheila's point, it doesn't have to be a gorge weekend, right? What we're seeing in streaming as well, I mean, I, I well, we met. I work on a TV show that was literally produced on the last millennia, and, I, and it's still, I have people coming up to me and saying, oh, I just started watching this show. Dawson's Creek, so, or Mighty Ducks for that matter. Like, it, it is amazing to me the long tail of things yeah. which we used to think was a thing, but now we're actually in that world, right? So it doesn't have to fall down a rabbit hole. You don't have to have a six week window or now a day and date window <laughs> and you, you get three days. And if you're not a success in three days, tough, that's it, that's the end. Um, and so, you know, those are each individual pain points we can be there right with you from the very beginning, but we can empower you at any step along the way to help you be the success that you should be. I think just to follow up on that, you know, you could come at any point, you could come at any point of your film's life cycle, whether at the beginning or the middle or the end. And, you know, we always hear now, if you're a filmmaker, you're an entrepreneur and you need to wear all the hats and you need to do the marketing and you have to do the financing, do everything and make this movie a success and then maybe we'll distribute it for you and we'll give you some money. But what we're trying to do here is wherever you are in that journey, we can help you. One of our companies will help you and then help you meet the next part of that journey within our network so that you don't have to do all that work yourself. You don't have to go and find a marketing company and then do your own research and find a distributor. Like that all is work. And I think what we've seen over the past five, 10 years is too much burden on the filmmaker to yeah. do it all alone and expectations that, you know, you're going to have 1 million followers on Instagram and you're going to tweet something and they're going to all show up for your film. Like that's one of the first questions when Weinstein was around was what they would ask you, like how many followers do you have in the little application form and expect, expecting the creators to push the boulder up the mountain by themselves. Um, it's not fair. And I think what Liquid can offer is that we're going to push you up together with many different companies and different people will sub in, sub out for different portions of that life cycle and we'll be there every step of the way. Yeah. It, it's not fair and it's not efficient. Right? No, and it shouldn't take you three to five years to yeah. get your next project Yeah, because you couldn't find an agent or a manager yeah. or somebody to look at your next project. Yeah. So with all the data and all the information and all the relationships, that that process will just happen faster. Yeah, just it's a, it's a creator economy. It's I mean, you look at people on TikTok, and suddenly they're like millions of followers, and they're making a little bit of money, but it's not sustainable because they're a one man band, and right. they're like doing their whole thing with the ring light or whatever. <laughs> and you, how many times can you do that dance and you know come up with your own stuff? So you, it takes a village. Like we have, yeah. we are stronger together yeah. for sure. I think early on, maybe five, 10 years ago again, when Netflix was acquiring a whole bunch of stuff from festivals and Amazon was coming in with Amazon Video Direct, all the independent filmmakers kind of rejoiced, right? This is our savior. Netflix comes in, buys it, here's $5 million, I made it. And they're not doing that anymore. And they've taken, they've already extracted all the value that they could 
from the creators themselves, and now they're producing their own content so they can keep it forever. Same thing with Amazon. Once Netflix stopped acquiring stuff, Amazon was kind of the, the last bastion for independent filmmakers to get you know, wide internet distribution. And what have we seen now? They don't need it anymore. They sent an email to all their filmmakers, you've been removed. And some people didn't even get an email. They're just gone. <laughs> and now they're making $500 million Lord of the Rings series because for them, you know, they've already extracted all the value they could get starting their video on demand service. And they don't need the independent filmmakers anymore and they've moved on. So if you're going to get somebody in your corner, you need somebody that's really like behind you. And I think Liquid is very much focused on that. And really wants to be behind you, not just for the one story. I mean, the, the ideal situation here is not only do we help you through the process of, of telling this story that you have in front of you, but we're there for your next one and the yeah, one after that family and family. the one after that. Because for, to me, one of the, the tragedies of the ecosystem as it exists right now is way too much talent has to stop after the first one. Like way too much. There are so many good films that I've seen, so many good filmmakers, good writers, good actors who, because of whatever accident of history that they didn't find their audience with that first one, they don't get the opportunity to go and tell the second and third and fourth and fifth story. And that's ultimately harmful to the, the total ecosystem of the entertainment industry because those are voices that need to be heard. And also from an audience standpoint, you know, we've really, really seen the, the broader industry has finally woken up to this, but the audience is demanding a much wider variety of storytellers and stories, right? It's not... It doesn't have to be formula anymore. And it doesn't have to be formula. And, and you know, the, gen, the, the media generation, right, the generation that comes up behind us is so savvy inside of their screens, right? And they're so willing to, uh, to experiment and test out new things that we haven't met that moment yet as an yeah. industry, I don't think, right? There's a, there's, there has to be a more complex um, production value than say a TikToker, right? But a less complex production value than a $500 million Lord of the Rings. Um, and there is, right? There's a whole environment of things that are being produced in that massive space in between, but we haven't, we haven't as an industry been good enough about supporting those voices. Yeah, that's a good point. But that's that's why you're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, so I thought it would be fun to just go around our, our room here, um, at least the front part of the room, uh, and and get one sense about what you're most excited about in terms of the future and where we're headed and and kind of connecting it to uh, you know what streaming can mean to the world. We'll start with you, Alan. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I got left out, so I'm going to bring you back in. You know, I think it's heading into a. Um, I think it's heading into a cool space. Um, everything that everyone has said has. I don't think anything's new here. Uh, COVID fast tracked a technology and development and a world that we've all been dreaming of for ten years. COVID just put that in in place in twelve months for us. Um, everyone had to work aggressively and. It's created opportunities in the ABOD space. You know, we've, I've seen ABOD platforms pop up like you've never seen before. Um, it's creating a lot of opportunities in the downstream space as well for the theatrical, digital day, uh, theatrical and digital day and date model. Um, I think that's a cool space. I think pre premium VOD has been talked about certainly when I was at Fox back in 2012 and, and it's now becoming a reality and uh, it makes sense. I think it makes sense for movies to get a theatrical audience as well as a digital audience. And, and, and that's, that's a cool journey, I think, to walk down. What I think Liquid is doing for me is the consolidation that we're offering collectively is I don't think a lot of people realize the challenge just goes into what, got, what happens behind the scenes. And this consolidation is really just streamlining that for them. And, and I'm excited about that. Awesome. Paul? I think I'm most excited because it really feels like a reset button has been pressed on everything and there's more opportunity than ever before. It's a little bit like the Wild West now because we don't know how what's going to happen, really. Um, you see, especially on the filmmaker side, more aggressive, more you know, bold types of content being making, made. Making, wow. Well, um, <laughs> more coffee. Yeah, more, more interesting and uh, content that they couldn't have made 
10, 20 years ago. We're seeing across the film festivals, for example, many more action and sci-fi movies at the independent level. Mm -hmm. That's not something you could have done. That's why there was always dramas and maybe comedies that were on the film festival circuit because it wasn't feasible. And now it is, you know, I get tons of Facebook ads about like, use these special effects, explosion, it's amazing. And you're seeing them apply that to their films. People even apply that to their TikTok videos. And it's like pretty amazing what people are doing <laughs> with these tiny devices. So you give them the power to create elevated content really with like minuscule budgets, but they can still tell amazing stories and they just need the platform. And I'm excited to help build that for them. Perfect, Sheila. Well, I guess what I'm most excited about is, I mean, I think about the film festivals and how they struggle for money. And every year they're back to square one. And between technology and COVID, we have just fast forwarded and democratized filmmaking, distribution, connection. It's um, to know that like you can have an audience in South Africa and, and the Middle East, I mean, in uh, Asia, and it's just like, like that. It's really exciting. And, and when I think from my lens, which is I really want to do good in the world with film, it's the reason I wake up and show up and open my computer and see all the gifts. <laughs> um, it's because it, it, you really can. And then it gives me hope on a sort of a, you know, like a 70,000 foot level for civilization. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. Straight to the core. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah, I'll keep for it. me, I, I the same. Like I am excited for audiences. Audiences now are more more clever, more loyal. They are more curious. They're searching out more independent content. They're kind of tired of this old studio model with the tent poles, and um, that's great for us. It's great for filmmakers as well. And uh, with this group of companies together as a platform, uh, it's great for audiences as well. So they, uh, I'm excited for that, for the film festivals. They'll be able to you know, join in film festivals all around the world. Um, but more options for audiences and more options for filmmakers is, is really exciting for both sides. I am excited to get to work for our community. I'm excited to get to work with everybody up here, and I'm excited to, to put these tools to use in our community. We've been building this for a long time, and now we're ready to go, and it's very exciting. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I'll just say, I, I, I echo everybody, obviously. Everybody up here is amazing. I would just say, you know, from a filmmaker's standpoint, I don't think there's ever been a better time. And that in and of itself is the most exciting thing to me because I, something you said before about the, the, the filmmaker that has trouble getting to the next movie. I was thinking how many films came through AFI or Slamdance or some of these festivals and then they couldn't get their next movie made. So they had to go get a job doing something they didn't want to do. So their dream was killed because they didn't have the team and the resources and the, and the, and the studio that you're building to kind of help them get that script good, get the right package, get the but get get everything together to give you the best chance to make the best movie. And then once you get the best movie, play the best festivals that are right for your movie. Play on the right platforms, have the right technology. So I think from a filmmaker standpoint, there's never been a better time. And um, thank you all for being here and helping to make that so. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you all for John. coming. Oh, we have a question. Thank you, everybody. Oh, oh, one last question. Oh, no, no, we could we could take another question. I just wanted to um, go a little bit on the previous question. So, if you are at the script stage, uh, feature or short, so where would you start? So, there's a there's a scoring system that we're going to ultimately have inside of when you when you come in at the very infancy, like you were just saying, to get to get that idea either into script form or in script form to, to tighten it up. Um, so we can be with, there with you right from the very beginning. 
And once we get through that script phase, through that development phase, then we can be there with you for the finance phase, and we can be there with you through the production phase, and we can be there th with you through the distribution phase. So uh, we have, we will have uh, a pretty specific and very robust tool set that will help you right at that, that infancy stage. The idea is your problem, how you develop it, we can be there with you. Yeah, it's a good question too. I'll just say for the record that uh, having been that that poor soul that's had to watch thousands and thousands of submissions over the years, that I would say more than 50% of those movies would have been much better off if they had some support in the, in the, in the, in the writing and the development stage before they rolled film. Yeah. It's just one of those things they think they're ready and they're not. I'm the first one, I mean, my movie wasn't that great. The first one, I wish I had a better story. I wish I had other things so having the tools to to get it ready before you start shooting is really really important it's much cheaper to edit on the page than it is in the editing room <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah any any other questions all right i think we're good thank you all again yeah. thank you for coming Thanks, awesome all right